The Estate by Ivy Wilde. Chapter 1 Alexandra Evans A summer breeze blew through my wavy chestnut-colored hair as I leaned against the hood of my 1985 Alfa Romeo Spider. The waters of the Chesapeake Bay sparkled in the sunlight, and for the first time in a long time, I smiled. Stretching my arms over my head, my fingers touched the windshield of the little red convertible. I think this might actually work, I said to myself aloud. There were very few clouds in the sky, and I placed an arm over my eyes to block out some of the sun. I thought about what I wanted to do with my last day of freedom. Mr. Willis had said I needed to be at the estate by 2 p.m., so I could stay out this evening and still have plenty of time to spare. I'd always been a planner. Even as a child, I'd written myself schedules, lists, and daily tasks to keep organized. And while it had become near impossible to control every aspect of my life as an adult, that didn't stop me from trying. Sitting back up, I took another deep breath of salty air before jumping off the hood of the car and hopping over the driver's side door. I started up the little Italian vehicle and placed it in first gear before zooming off towards my hotel, my hair blowing wildly around my face. It took a few miles of driving down the winding roads to find the little white cottage. It wasn't a hotel as much as it was a toned-down version of a bed and breakfast. This area of the bay wasn't built up much, and besides the extraordinarily expensive resort in town and a heaping of equally upscale B&Bs, I was thankful to have found something within my budget. Hopping back over the driver's side door, I walked around the car to grab the small suitcase that had been my only traveling companion. The little cottage was picturesque, with bright flowers lining large stepping stones up to the wrap around porch. The steps creaked slightly under my weight as I walked up to the front door, the place clearly showing its age. Grabbing the small brass knocker, I tapped it three times and waited patiently for the host. Coming, an elderly voice sounded from behind the door. You must be Lex, the woman said as she welcomed me inside. Alexandra Evans, I said, shaking her hand gently. But yes, I do go by just Lex. I'm Ellen. The woman matched her house perfectly. Her white hair was tied back in a loose bun atop her head with not a hair out of place. She wore a delicate blouse, a loose skirt, and a pair of sneakers. She had obviously lost a few inches over the course of her life, but I imagined she must have been a true beauty when she was younger. The house itself was the perfect beach cottage, with seashells and little knickknacks strategically placed throughout the entranceway. Did you make it out of the city okay? Ellen asked me as she led me through a tour of the home. I hit a bit of traffic, but you know what the city is like? I laughed. Thankfully, it's been over a decade since I've had to go there, the woman replied. I look forward to the time when I can say that. I responded and we shared a smile. Ellen led me down a few steps before handing me a key and opening the door. Here is the attached suite where you'll be staying, she said, ushering me through the door. The bathroom's just through there, she added, pointing at a little door in the corner of the room. And that door there is the private entrance if you need to come back or leave after hours. Thank you, I said with another smile as I placed my suitcase onto the bed. It looks wonderful. I only wish it were for more than one night. Come back and see me any time. Guest or not, you're a part of the family now she said, and I couldn't help the warm feeling that sprung up in my heart. That means a lot to me, thank you. Ellen nodded and turned to exit, but I stopped her. I was hoping to go out and explore a little tonight. Do you have any suggestions on where I could go that's walking distance? I didn't expect there to be a large Uber presence in the area, and I did want to have a few drinks on my last night of freedom. The resort area is pretty much the only commercial area around. Ellen explained. It's about a three blocks walk. Most people your age go to the restaurant there. They've got a bar and some sort of dance club on the upper level that starts up after my bedtime. I giggled lightly as Ellen winked at me. Thanks for the info. I'll have to check it out. Just remember if you come back late, that key will only work on the side entrance. Got it, thank you, I replied. Well, let me know if you need anything else. I'll let you get settled in, Ellen said with a wave as she closed the door. As soon as the door clicked shut, I flopped down on the bed, 
the springs beneath me creaking in agitation. I squeezed my eyes shut, trying not to let anxiety about my new job get the better of me. This was a new start. I didn't want to let old things hold me back anymore. Shaking my head, I rolled over and unzipped my suitcase. Rummaging through my few bits of clothing, I found the perfect outfit for the evening. I laid it out on the bed before heading into the bathroom to take a quick shower. As much as I loved my little Alfa Romeo, driving with the top down wasn't the best for keeping one's hair in order. Within an hour, I was dressed and ready to hit the town. I twirled in front of the dresser mirror and smiled at my reflection. It had been a long time since I felt this good. I loved this mini dress and so rarely had a place to wear it, but it was perfect for tonight. The polka dot pattern coupled with its long sleeves made up for the fact that it cut quite low in the front and quite high on my legs. I paired it with leather strappy sandals and a pop of red lipstick before pulling my long hair into a messy bun on top of my head. I stuffed some cash, my phone and the little key ring into my crossbody bag before looping it over my arm and heading out for my last night of freedom. My walk into town was mostly deserted in the beginning, but as I got closer, more and more people began to appear, until finally, I was in the center of everything. The resort overlooked the bay, and restaurants and boutique shops crowded the two street blocks that made up this area's commercial district. I took my time to wander into a few stores to look through their trinkets, but just as I was about to walk into the last shop, my stomach growled, reminding me that I had neglected it for some time. Looking around, most of the restaurants seemed fairly busy and expensive. I cringed as I looked at a few of the menus. Fifteen dollars for a side salad? Yikes. It must have been later than I expected because I could hear music pouring out of the resort nearby. <laughs> Ellen had mentioned that the resort bar was where people my age went. I hoped the food would be more reasonably priced there. When I reached the downstairs bar, I looked at the menu encased in glass outside and smiled. Eight dollar drinks and food during happy hour. Perfect, I thought as I entered through revolving doors and took a seat at the bar. The place was busy, but not so busy that it was hectic. Most of the people sitting at the bar had their eyes glued to the televisions. I looked up to see the America's Cup race. I giggled a little at how fitting it was that everyone here was watching yachting. The bartender approached and I ordered something to eat and a glass of white wine to match. As I waited for my food, I turned around in my chair to watch the bustle of people moving about outside. A few people looked at me oddly, likely not able to understand why I wasn't watching the race, but I didn't care. I wanted to get the full experience of this place tonight, not watch television. I could do that any night. The low hum of an engine caught my attention and my eyes widened as a black Alfa Romeo 8C pulled up in front of the resort. I watched with rapt attention as the car's owner stepped out of the driver's seat. I tried to suppress a moan as I got a good look at him. He was exactly my type, tall, muscled, with a face that looked like it scowled often. His dirty blonde, almost brown hair was faded on the sides with the top longer and slick to the side. He was a beautiful specimen. One of the attendants came running up, but the man shook his head before throwing the keys to another valet that was standing a few feet back. I could hear the last few words the man said as he made his way through the rotating door. You're the only one I trust with her, Michael. His voice was a deep baritone and sent shivers through my entire body. The attendant, Michael, raised a hand in a mock salute, and the man nodded as he entered the room. Your drink, ma'am the bartender said, startling me out of my ogling. I turned around, cheeks red, and thanked the man before taking a long sip. The bartender looked at me with a bit of a furrowed brow. I knew he was likely sizing me up to be a problem, but I couldn't be bothered with that right now. Frank, good to see you, the deep voice sounded behind me, and I kept my eyes fixed on the television even though I so desperately wanted to look at the man that was presently coming up behind me. Wasn't expecting to see you here, the bartender responded, leaning across the bar to shake hands. Got some business to handle tomorrow. His voice washed over me from just to the right. Four roses? The bartender asked, 
but the mystery man shook his head. Just tonic. I'm headed to a meeting. He stayed standing, waiting for his drink, and I finally couldn't resist the urge to turn around any longer. Were you driving an 8C? I all but blurted out. The man turned to look at me with wide eyes. I met his gaze briefly before having to break eye contact. His stare was too heavy to meet for long. It was as if he was sizing me up before deciding to respond. Finally, he spoke. Not many people would know that, he said simply, answering the question by not answering it. I've got one of my own is all, I said a little sheepishly. One of the man's eyebrows lifted, and I suddenly realized I needed to clarify. An Alfa Romeo, not an 8C, I said with a small chuckle. Damn it, I am totally messing this up, I internally chided myself. I hated myself for being so awkward right now. This was supposed to be my night, and here I was, making a fool of myself to the most gorgeous man I had ever seen. The man shrugged, his black tee stretching across his muscled shoulders. Considering that there were only 90 shipped to the U.S. total, it's possible, he paused. Just improbable. I gave him a fake smile. Sorry, just had to ask is all, I said, before turning back to take a drink of my wine. I could feel the eyes of the man still on me, and I kept my gaze forward, pretending to ignore his intense stare. Thankfully, the bartender returned with his drink and my food to break up the awkward silence. I began to idly munch the vegetables on my hummus plate, keeping my mouth shut for fear of humiliating myself again. Of course, the man took a seat next to me at the bar, turning to face me. His long legs spread on either side of my body, the only way that he fit in the small space. Question for you, he said, and I had no choice but to turn and face him. He was so much closer to me now. I could smell his sandalwood cologne, and it had my brain short-circuiting. Come on, Lex. Concentrate. I looked up into his eyes and immediately became distracted by their intense, dark green color. Someone calling out from the other side of the room had him turning towards the sound. I looked to see an older man in a suit waving at him from across the lobby. Excuse me, he said, leaving his seat abruptly, taking his drink with him and heading towards the new arrival. I let out a breath. I didn't realize I'd been holding in before taking another long drink to finish my glass of wine. Another? the bartender asked, as he noticed me set down the empty glass. Please, I replied with a smile. The bartender gave me a knowing look. He has that effect on everyone, he said. If you hang around here long enough, you'll eventually get you set to his intensity. Who is he? I asked before shoving some pita and hummus into my mouth. That's Carter Ross.